Uh, really excited about this whole content track, by the way. So you guys are in for a treat. Our next session uh, is no exception. Uh, we're, for the session, we're going to talk about the future of Tesla three, five, ten years from now. We have an amazing selection of panelists, and I mean amazing. We've got Farzad, Brian White from My Tesla Weekend, Alexandra Mertz, Booma Mama, and Amy at SF underscore 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 Tahoe uh, on uh, X, uh, Twitter now known as X. So I get, get used to that. So without further ado, Alexandra, <laughs> Brian, Farzad, Amy. Oh, I got a mic. We'll get you one. Thank you. Can you come join us? You should. Here. Can we get another hand for John and Kelvin for doing such a great job getting this whole thing put together? Awesome stuff, you guys. Cannot believe how big this is getting. Does this work? So I'm going to take a picture of you all excited. So you're going to all wave and clap, please. Yes. Send me the picture. Thanks. Yeah, and me yeah, too. Tag us all. See how I do that? Yeah. Yeah. Alexandra awesome. is always thinking. <laughs> so Alexandra has some uh, stuff that's ready on her phone to talk about. Should I put you on the spot right away, or should we talk about something else first? What do you think? Not at all. Okay. You're, are you already starting of this? Of course. Right? This you is what I do. I just ask killing. questions and I talk. This is what I do. <laughs> oh, okay. <it's> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Thank you all so much for coming out, seriously. We really appreciate you. Um, we're just gonna talk about the future of, of Tesla in the near term, mid term, and long term. I think all of us really could sit down for 10 hours and talk someone's ear off, right, about Tesla yeah. <laughs> and where the company is gonna be. But I, I'm really excited to sit down with the panel here and talk about it. So, I mean, who wants to go first? Should we start with three years? What do you guys think? Who wants to hit three years first? Brian looks like he wants to oh, go first. Oh, I, I, I could, I mean, I can do any of them, but three go years is a good one. So one of the great questions I got just today is somebody said, vehicle to grid, how soon is it coming and why isn't it here? You know, and uh, there's this rumor uh, and, uh, that I am a time traveler. And if anyone <laughs> hears from the time travel permit authority, it's not true, but, it, but it's true. So why isn't there vehicle to grid yet? And is it coming? It is coming. I'm absolutely convinced it's going to be part of the virtual power plant system. It's going to be part of auto bidder. And the reason it's not here yet is because we've seen the abuses that people do when it comes to uh, this supercharging network and free supercharging. Now imagine people buying a little fleet, a little Turo fleet, and never putting it on the road, just hooking it up to the power grid, getting two bucks a kilowatt hour. And then uh, here we are eight years later, the battery's still under warranty and it's fried because they made 300 grand using it as a battery. So until we get LFPs, which can do a longer cycle life, and are cheaper to build in the first place and can go zero to 100 without damage, we're not gonna see that. So in the three year term, I expect to see that. I expect to see vehicle to grid. Obviously we're gonna have the compact model out on the road and uh, ramping in at least one factory, but I'm gonna say two. And it's gonna be the Tesla Model Y being the best selling car in the world, congratulations by the way, is exciting. <laughs> But it's an expensive car. Now do a car that's that good, but half the price, and all of a sudden you're talking real numbers. That's, that's a little thought on the three-year horizon. What do you guys think? You want to take it next, Amy? Sure. Um, I 100% agree with Brian, uh, but of course I love energy, so we have to talk a little bit more about Tesla energy. I expect that we're going to have more energy factories for Megapack on more continents. If you think that it is the size of a shipping container, it doesn't make sense to be having to put this on a boat. So Tesla's goal and how they're going to get to one terawatt of energy in 2030 and 20 million vehicles is to localize the supply chain to the factories, to the end user, and you take out all, vastly simplify the logistics, and even when you vastly simplify the logistics, you're gonna be moving massive amounts of tonnage of materials around to be, to be able to accomplish these goals. So we're gonna see a, a, some more factories going into play in three years, and it will just be the start. And I would like to see Optimus working in Tesla factories at that time frame. Uh, FSD out on the roads, 
as not a, be a beta and being licensed by at least a couple of other uh, auto manufacturers? What, what do you think, Alexandra? What, what ideas yeah, do you have? I do believe we'll have startup licensing. But let's go first pause out and then I put numbers behind it all. Okay, sounds Three good. Years. Yeah, go nice. And the payback, very good. Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice done. I deserve that. I think what's really interesting about the Tesla story, and as sort of Brian and Amy have already outlined it, is that it's a lot more than just a car company, right? So when you talk about people, uh, generally speaking, I mean, all you see out here is cars, right? But we know that there's a lot more in the works. I think what's interesting about the sort of three, five, 10 year horizon is that as you get into that five year, 10 year, Tesla becomes, in my opinion, and I think you guys probably share this and everybody else in this room, becomes less and less a car company and becomes more and more an infrastructure company, right? So the, five, the three year plan for me the way I look at it is, I think it's really about uh, ensuring that as many people as possible, which is, I guess, is something I say all the time, is <laughs> as possible, apologies for that. Um, it, it really making sure that the transportation segment is fully encapsulated. So that's uh, expensive cars all the way down to affordable cars. And a lot of the data that we're seeing out from the market really proves this. You brought up best-selling uh, car in the world with the Model Y. Yeah, but again, this right. is before, before a compact car and before the impact of full self-driving. Now, the full self-driving variable, for it to really grab hold, it's going to take a, a longer time, I think. Especially, I think, and I'm curious to pull this later in the crowd, FSD's performance. But um, I think it's really going to be that, that excitement around the brand. Cybertruck, compact car, once those two things are out and about and all over the place, I think it's really going to send a message to the broader auto market that it's not just something that's 20% of the market or 25% of the market, is that you have to be ready to be in every single segment. Otherwise, in 10 years' time, you're not going to be around. So it's going to be around sending that message from a transportation perspective. That was good. Thank you. Yeah, that was better than I that prepared thought. it. I had it memorized. <laughs> Okay. No, okay. I, well, I wanted I want to take on the task and put this in numbers. So excuse me that I use my phone. Just want to make sure I don't tell you anything wrong. So we had this earnings call a week ago, and this was the first time that Tesla had sales of 25 billion dollars for a quarter. So that makes it 100 billion in a year. Good. Keep on going. It's me. Keep on going. Okay. I like so that Darren fist bump. That was good. <laughs> I saw it. <laughs> for that. For those 100 billion, we can expect somewhere between 10 and 12 billion dollars of profits this year. 10 to 12 billion profits, keep that in mind. Currently, energy has about 6% of that, okay? 6%, the cars and the services around is 94%. And this year, we're going for 1.8 million cars. So we just discussed where we should be in three years. Let me put that in numbers. I think we'll be at 5 million cars, so that's three times what we have now, close to it. The energy will then add 20%, not 6%. FSD will add 10%. So sales will be at 350 billion. Just told you we were at 100 billion now, 350 billion in three years for 45 billions of profits. Keep wow. that in mind when we move to year five. Not financial advice. So then, um, any other thoughts on the three years? Do, do we want to hit anything? Because I'm guessing at the end we can probably encapsulate the yeah, thoughts. Yeah. Um, five years, who wants to, who wants to take it? I'll, yeah. I'll take it again. Three and five years are so close together, it makes sense to just keep moving. Yeah. At five years, I, what Ava was saying about the mega packs on factories on every continent is exactly right. You only need to build them in places where they have electricity. <laughs> so that's kind of everywhere. And they are too big for regular roads. The uh, V1 was uh, 50,000 pounds. You could get it on a semi. The new version's 82,000 pounds. It's an oversized load any way you slice it. And the math works for it to do the bigger one. It just, it makes sense. Shipping it doesn't. So what are we waiting for is the, is the, is the batteries. We're waiting for the supply. Elon had said twice last year, we are not cell constrained. We have enough cells to build cars and mega packs. But what he didn't say is, at, at the kind of scale you and I are imagining. And these are using LFP cells, uh, and those factories are already being built right now all around the world, in Europe, in Asia, everywhere. So 
In five years, we will definitely see those in place. We will see more models in more lines. We'll see, I assume, a van because the boring tunnel is going to be needing those, and uh, that's a good customer. And with that, I think, no, no, uh, there, I, I think there's very few people here who would argue that FSD will not be done in five years. Right. Three years, I, get, I could see some disagreements, but five is, is a lot more doable. And the five-year horizon will, will, be, <laughs> will be within a couple years of the 2030 goal of 20 million vehicles. Will that happen? Hey, man, if you fall short by half, you'll still be the number one car maker in the world. <laughs> yeah. So five years, again, I think this may surprise you, but I am very excited about it. <laughs> I'm shocked. Shocked. Yeah. I'm shocked too. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. How uncharacteristic. I, and you're also going to be shocked for that, that I'm also very excited about it. Oh my God. <laughs> I can't believe it. I know. Like, five years from now, I think that what we're going to see is we're going to be using our cars in a completely different way than we use them right now. When your car is driving itself, and when you can get work done on the way back and forth to the office, when you can actually have quality time with your kids rather than telling them to shush up in the back seat, it's going to be a very different experience, and that's going to create a oper platform opportunity for Tesla in controlling the software in the car and the entertainment system in the car. And we're starting to see some of this platform business for Tesla develop already with the superchargers, with the talk of licensing FSD, and that's just going to expand out, in my opinion, in five years. Yeah, I think what's really interesting about this three to five year change, or I guess as, as we go into the fifth year, and Brian sort of talked about this, is that it seems like it's close together, but depending how full self-driving yeah. comes to fruition, we either have world A or world B, yeah. right? And everything gets real crazy. Let me poll the audience. Raise your hand if you think full self-driving will be d like robo-taxi level five within three years. Raise your hand. Three okay. years, okay? Three, this is years. three years. Okay, put your hands down. Who thinks within five years? Okay. Five years too. <laughs> All right, and then ten years. I'm guessing probably about yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah. So I think so. What I'm seeing there is that there is a significant portion of the audience that thinks it's going to get completed within three years, right? So it becomes really hard to predict what year five is gonna look like if that's true, yeah. right? Because you think about what happens if full self-driving comes to fruition. Every car that doesn't full self-drive, what's the point of having that car, exactly. right? That's the question you have. To, and Elon Musk has been talking about this a thousand times. But then really the, the broader population uh, becomes aware of this. And then you have to think about what does the market look like when it's not just a uh, super talented, sometimes insane billionaire is saying this, but everybody is saying, you know what, this is not what I want. I want something that's either going to become an asset that can generate cash for me, or it's something that I can ride for a fraction of the price to the airport, right? You hail an Uber right now, so I live in the Austin area, an Uber from my house to the airport is like 80 bucks, right? With a robo-taxi or a self-driving car without a driver, it's like, what, 20 bucks? Like, what, what percentage of that total cost is the driver? And then you layer on energy. And then you layer on the bot, potentially. And then you layer on the van, right? And, and all these other segments yeah. that we're talking about. And whatever else you might be getting into with their manufacturing expertise and, uh, and AI expertise, right? So the world gets weird starting in five years. And I'm scared to talk about 10 years. Like, that's, that's how weird it is, right? Exactly. But do you have some numbers? I do have okay, some numbers. Okay, please. Of course. <laughs> Show us Thank your you numbers. <laughs> Alexander so, never lets us down. <laughs> so in my numbers for year five, I figured that some of the OEMs will now license at least autopilot, probably FSD, and maybe more, okay? They need time to implement that. Even if they would talk now to Tesla, it will take them three years, so the revenue will start really to show in year five. So you remember those numbers, 100 billion of sales this year, 350 in year three, now, year five, 800 billion, okay? This is the exponential curve. You remember, we had 1.8 million cars this year, 5 million cars in year three, 10 million cars in year five. Now all the factories are up and ramping, now it's happening. Energy, this year 6%, in three years 20%, will add 33%. I want to just point out, energy will at one point be as big as cars, so we have to get there. 
So with all that, we will have sales of 800 billion, so year five is really consequential, and more than 100 billion of profits. Not financial advice. <laughs> <laughs> Not financial advice, yeah. ever. Very good, catching it's, up now. It's just a crazy Tesla boomer mama. <laughs> it is, yeah. Um, all right, let's get weird, 10 years. Oh my gosh. Let's get weird. So you were, the thing you were saying about the questions are we going to be in universe A or B after five years? Yeah. After because if if FSD is cracked in year three, year five looks Very unrecognizable from the other scenario. And at year ten, there are people here who I believe are of sound mind, <laughs> who who may be right in saying that it could be ten years, but if it's been solved for seven years, we're, we're uh, today's today's stock price will look hilariously cheap. <laughs> the, there were people who looked at, when I bought in 2019, they said, oh my God, you paid 188 a share? What <laughs> I wouldn't touch it with a 10-foot pole. And now, they can't afford a 10-foot pole. <laughs> so they, and any of these step changes stand to disrupt that. And it is crazy to think that far out. We will be two years past the, or three years past the target of of uh, 20 million cars. Yeah. If we don't get it in 2030, by 2033, maybe we do. Maybe cars aren't even the question anymore. Maybe we're asking the wrong question. When I see all these articles coming out with all the fear, uncertainty, and doubt, it's, oh, the, you know, and aren't you concerned the stock price is gonna go down tomorrow? It doesn't matter what the stock price does tomorrow, because I ain't selling tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I might yeah. buy tomorrow, but I ain't selling. And you can, and those, BS tactics can only push the stock down for so long before the fundamentals kick in and take it and, and take over because the PE ratio doesn't lie. You can get a little excited with it. But right now, all those EV companies we saw with insane valuations are getting a little more grounded because we're in the phase where investors want to see execution. And I only know of one EV company that's actually executing. And, and this is, and I say this every year, Tesla's still in their infancy. There is so much room to grow. Yeah. Amy? 100%. Yeah, I think that in 10 years, I'm just gonna fall back on Elon Musk and Master Plan 3. He's given, he's given us a blueprint of what he wants the world to look like in 10 years. He wants us moving toward a sustainable energy future. He wants the usage of oil and gas to be dramatically minimized. Tesla might be doing heat pumps if nobody else steps up. I don't think that they necessarily want to do it. But the way that Elon Musk operates is if he comes up with a plan, that plan's going to happen. And if nobody else steps into the heat pump space, then Tesla's stepping into the heat pump space. And they do have ex expertise. We all saw the Octoval, and it was an incredible piece of engineering. Beyond that, I think that it's a world of abundance, that Elon Musk has talked about that, that when you, when you have cheap energy, when you have it cheap and easy transportation, and then what he's doing with his other companies, we'll bring that in here, with Starlink, with internet for everybody, you're gonna have a very different world where people aren't doing dangerous and risky and repetitive jobs because Optimus is doing it, and the whole planet is a better place for not just humanity, but all the other creatures on it. Yeah. That's what Master Plan 3 is about. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Let me uh, take another poll. All right, who here is gonna buy Tesla bot? Raise your hands. Okay, like more than half of the crowd. Okay, how many of you expect a Tesla to come out with a bot before they announced it? No. One person. Okay, are, are you telling the truth? Okay, good. He's telling the truth, all right? Um, that is the next 10 years. Yeah. What are the products that Tesla's going to announce and come out with that none of us have any idea they're gonna come out with? Right? And what is that by enabled by? What you said, right? Yeah. F access to free and abundant energy through their battery supply chain and their innovative process of creating energy generation systems and a disruption to labor through the Tesla bot and a disruption to transportation through their semi, cyber truck, and whatever other land type of transportation systems they have, right? And so this is where the infrastructure play comes in. You transition away from just car company to a company that potentially, not financial advice, that potentially <laughs> has a, a death's grip on the supply chain of raw materials, manufacturing capability, scale, volume, 
and access to free or extremely cheap and abundant energy that nobody else has. And so what does that mean within that context, right? Yeah. What, what is the creation from that? Now, I think the two ways that plays out, in my opinion, it's either one, Tesla has extreme control over that and nobody else can play and they become the only company, right? Or one of the very few ones that can make an impact and then they can start getting slapped with antitrust lawsuits left and right. Mm -hmm. Or all of these things become abundant for everybody, like what yeah. you just said, right? And all of us have the ability to have access to these technologies. I think if the five-year mark gets weird, the 10-year mark, we're just, we're on Mars. Literally, we're on Mars <laughs> yes. in 10 years, right? As long as the vision becomes true. And this is where the next three years and the five years are so crucial for execution, because if you are on track for the next three to five years to fulfill that vision, then that vision becomes essentially guaranteed, because who wouldn't want to live in a world where most of the energy is incredibly cheap, abundant, labor is incredibly cheap and abundant, and transportation is incredibly cheap and abundant, right? That seems like a win-win for everybody. And Tesla is at the center of it, right? Now the question becomes, can they make it happen? And what are the things that are required to make it happen, right? And what are the end results if that were to happen? Do you have some numbers to describe that? I do. I do have numbers, okay. but I just want to warn you, everybody, if Gary falls off his chair, watch out for him, okay? Um, so I do believe it may not be 10 years. They may be merely late, right? We're used to that. But I just want to point out where I think we will be in 2033. And my bull case for the stock price is $11,000 then. Is he still sitting? Okay. So... <laughs> So he shook his will. head, yes. He went like this. No, he went like this. I'm doing this. I'm doing this. Um, so Tesla will produce 20 million cars. You will see my different language. While I said they will sell 10 million cars in year five, I say they will produce 20 million cars. I'm not sure they will still sell it. I think by then this whole fleet model could be worldwide in place, and it may not be that it is a revenue bringer immediately by selling cars, but it will be a, a software as a service, oh, here I go again, uh, bringer, and then we have that revenue. So Tesla will produce 20 million cars. Energy by then will add 100%. By then, energy will be as big as cars, if not bigger. FSD will add 200%, at least. And bots will add another 200%. The utility gets, oh, there he goes. Oh, don't blow up, Gary. Don't, don't, don't. Don't, don't, don't. <laughs> so that brings us to six trillion of sales and three trillion of profit, because now we are at a 50% profit margin through software as a service. So there we go. I'm going to get so much heat next week from him. You have no idea. <laughs> Let's just go. Not financial. I am done. Okay. Oh, there's the Aptera. Look at oh, that. Oh, look at this. Cool. Cool. There's an Aptera, nice. It's fitting when we're talking about what the future looks like, isn't it? The future, <laughs> welcome. Don't Very drive nice. into the stage. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Um, so any, any additional thoughts before maybe we start thinking about how all the companies come together in 10 years time, right? Because yes. there's a whole vision, but Brian, you want to go ahead? Yeah, so one, one thing I would want to add on the whole notion of the, of the haters. Whenever you hear a conspiracy or a conspiracy theory, my question is always, but who benefits? But why? Yeah. You know, when, there's, when, they, when they say the earth is flat, I say, but why? Well, who benefits? And there's no answer. When it comes to hating on Tesla, hating on SpaceX, any of his projects, they're all interlinked. When the Crew Dragon first flew and the astronauts were delivered on Model Xs, the next day the stock went up. Because you can't invest in SpaceX, it's a halo, it brings it all up. So who stands to gain from knocking Tesla or SpaceX or any of those companies down a peg? And the answer is almost every other company in the Fortune 500 because they're disrupting energy across the board, g power generation, automotive, labor, drivers, shippers. It is everybody and they all stand to benefit. So my lesson there, not financial advice, I guess, <laughs> no, no, is no. hold, 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 because, because the noise can only, can only stay loud for so long before the reality drowns it out. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody else wanted to add anything there? Yeah, I have, uh, we haven't talked about what AI is going to look like or the licensing model. 
of Dojo because that's just coming online. So, you know, it's hard to even say what three five, or five years looks like, let alone 10. But AI is going to dramatically change the way that the world looks. Walter Isaacson was recently on a Spaces, and I'd heard Elon Musk say once that he thought that other companies had a huge lead on AI. And Walter was asked about that, and he said that actually Elon Musk has changed his mind. That when he looks at what it's going to take to get to AGI, he thinks that it's going to have two components. One component being practical AI, the type of AI that Tesla does better than anyone else with FSD, where they have zero margin for error, really. You know, like the, if you look, you ask chat GPT question, and the, the internet was rife with all the wrong answers, and it created a lot of laughs. But that can't happen with FSD. So he says that that's one component of AGI. And then the other component is ge the generative AI or the large language models. And Tesla actually does do that with their language of lanes. So now when he looks at it, he actually thinks that XAI and all the Elon Musk companies are actually in the lead when it comes to AGI. Because practical AGI, a a a AI is much harder to do than the generative AI, and nobody else has the core competency in that area. Right, and what's really interesting there too is, you think about how much Tesla, the company, is gonna be investing in that, right? In, yeah. in the building out of Dojo, building out of compute power. I think the number that was thrown out there in the last earnings call was a billion dollars in the next 12 Correct. months, right? Yes. Correct, One yeah. billion dollars in the next 12 months on self -funded. just- Self-funded. Self-funded. I mean, ChatGPT lost a billion dollars a year before they went live. <laughs> Isn't know, that like, wild, right? And yeah. having free cash flow, and having 23 billion on the bank account. While yeah. still building giant factories all over and, the world. And yeah. maybe yeah. cutting prices, oops, sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but what's crazy there is you think about how much resources, and, and Tesla has talked about this, how much resource, how much money it takes to invest now so that the 10-year mark looks fruitful and looks great for the company. And that's the kind of move that needs to be uh, done by a company to be able to secure that 10-year time frame. And it's just... Is there any other, like, I, this is a genuine question, yeah. and maybe Gary knows this. Is there any other company that in the next 12 months that's investing that much money in AI? A billion dollars in the next 12 months? I mean, I do believe there are probably lots of people throwing lots of money at it. Yeah. But uh, there are two things. First, this is not language AI. AI. This is practical vision yeah. and utility AI, which is much bigger threshold of utility yeah. than just language, much more difficult to copy. So Elon said it very well, they have the talent, they have the compute power, and they have yeah. now the data, because you need the data. Nobody comes even close. So lots of people will throw huge amounts at it. There are, there are lots of multi-billion mm -hmm. companies that want to have this market as well, but they have to build up what Tesla has been building yeah. up over the last six to eight years. So this is gonna be very difficult for competitors. If I had to guess, I would say maybe Google or Apple would be spending that kind of money, maybe yeah. Microsoft. I but, do. but in terms of, yes, absolutely. But in terms of companies that build physical products, boy, I just don't see it. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think the biggest takeaway from that is that they're throwing all this money in the next 12 years, that we're throwing more money in the next three to five years into this hardware build out for the chips, software yeah. know-how, collecting the data, okay. So majority of the crowd here thought FSD will be solved by three years, if not within five years. The bot should get solved somewhere around that time frame, maybe double that time frame. But then after those two things are quote unquote solved or say bot can do 95% uh, of useful jobs and we can drive everywhere or something will drive us, is that hardware just gonna sit idle? No. Is that software just gonna shut down? Yeah. All that money you've invested to solve really difficult problems, yeah, the most difficult. what are you doing with yeah. that? It's just Excellent gonna be point. chilling in the server? Yeah. No, yeah. no, it's gonna be in the Tesla brain. So then, hopefully Elon's still around for a really long time, <laughs> but if you have that brain, figuring out what the AI brain's gonna do, it seems like a lot of stuff, and I almost said the other word, a lot of stuff can be done that none of us are thinking about. And that personally is what gets me most excited about the company, it's that 10 year, still, and yeah. this company has been around for how long already? And we've been right. mind blown for the last 10 years. Yes. And it still has another 10 years of no, wild stuff coming yet. through, you know? Yeah. It's absolutely right. insane. It is. Well, did you love our panel? Yeah. I want to take more. <laughs>
Awesome. Thank you, everybody. Enjoy your time. Thank you. And uh, you we'll best. hand it over. Right. So Thank you all. Thank you, everybody.